The House of Squibb presents Academy Awards. Every week, Squibb brings you Hollywood's finest. The great picture plays, the great actors and actresses. Techniques and skills chosen from the honor roll of those who have won or been nominated for the famous Golden Oscar of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. And now, E.R. Squibb and Sons, manufacturing chemist to the medical profession since 1858, bring you the distinguished actor, Mr. Paul Lucas, who won the 1943 Academy Award as Best Actor of the Year. Tonight, Mr. Lucas will star in the thrilling drama Watch on the Rhine, the picture which was nominated as Best Screenplay and Best Production of 1943, and in which Mr. Lucas won his Academy Award. This is the story of a German who, with his American-born wife and their three children, came to America, passed through on a brief visit after Munich and before Pearl Harbor. This man was admitted as a refugee under the name of Kurt Miller. In the gentle hills outside Washington, D.C., this hunted and weary family stood almost in tears in the heart of this sanctuary, the proud old home of the Farrelly's. I have always known, Sarah, that you must have grown up in a lovely house like this. Thank you, Kurt. Children, sit down and be comfortable. My mother will be here directly to welcome us. To sit on the couch? Is it allowed, Mother? Yes, Babette. It is allowed. But the door of the home was not locked. We just came in. You find it curious to believe that there are people who live and do not need to watch. Hey, Joshua? Yes, Father. It is strange. But it must be good, I think. Yes. Isn't it a lovely house? I'd almost forgotten. Look, the old portrait over the fireplace, just like it has always been. And this picture. My father and mother were visiting Spain. This is Alfonso and dated May 7th, 1910. There was a party at the palace and I had cakes and a glass of champagne. I was 10. Later that day, someone tried to shoot Alfonso. He was always getting shot at. Certainement. Speak English, please. Since when do you think it is right to shoot upon people? Do not give me lessons. It's not right to shoot upon people. I know that. I was born here in this house, children, upstairs. My brother David and I used to have our own garden across the pond. I like a garden. I've always hoped we'd have a home someday and settle down. Oh, I'm talking foolish. Sentimental. At my oh, age. Sarah, stop this nonsense. This is a fine room, a fine place to be. Everything is so pleasant and full of comfort. This will be a good piano on which to play again. And it is all so clean. I like that. You must enjoy your house, Sarah. And you shall not be afraid that you will hurt me because I have not given you a house like this. Yes? Oh, yes, of course. It's strange, that's all. We've never been together in a place like this. <laughs> but that does not mean and should not mean that we do not remember how to enjoy what comes our way. We are on a holiday. Sarah. Daughter. Mama. Sarah. Sarah, darling, you're here. You're really here. Welcome. Welcome to your house, Sarah. You are not young, Sarah. No, Mama. I'm 38. Yeah, 38, of course. You look more like your father now. That's good. The years have helped you. Welcome to this house, sir. Thank you, madam. You are a good-looking man for a German. I like a good-looking man. I always have. And I like a good-looking woman. I always have. Is that gross, Mama? Yes, I am your grandmother. Also, I speak German, so do not talk about me. Oh, it is good to have you home again. I'm chattering away. Mama hasn't changed. I have fine plans. I'm making the wing over for you, walls taken out. Oh, that's but... kind of you, Mama, but we won't make any plans for a while. A good long vacation for court. Vacation? Well, your brother David is seeing about schools for the children. 
And Cyrus Penfield is finding an engineering post for Kurt. Uh, but I have not worked as an engineer since many years, madam. You gave it up? Well, one could say it that way. What do you do? Oh, it is so difficult to explain. You wish to know whether not being an engineer buys lunches for my family. It does not. I have no wish to make a mystery of what I have been doing. But it sounds so big, and it is so small. I am an anti-fascist. And to answer your question, that does not pay well. But we're all anti-fascists. Yes, Mama, but Kurt works at it. What kind of work? Any kind. Anywhere. I... I will stop asking questions. That would be sensible. Sarah! David! I heard. Don't be angry. We've been worried about you, naturally. We knew so little except that you were having a hard time. This is David, my brother. My husband. Welcome, sir. Thank you. We'll drop this inquisition if you prefer. It is not an inquisition. I will tell you. Wait. David, you and Mama must know. I didn't have a hard time, the way you mean. Not ever. For almost 12 years, we lived modestly and happily. As happily as people could live in a starved Germany that was going to peace. Sarah, please. You are angry. I do not like it that way. Let me try to find a way to tell it with quickness. Yes. I was born in a town called Fürth. And there is a holiday in my town. We call it Kirchwey. It was a gray, gay holiday with games and music and, and the hot white sausage to eat with the wine. Now I grow up, I move away to school, to work, get married, but always I come back for Kirchwey. It is for me the greatest day in the year. But after the war, the First World War, that day begins to change. The sausage begins to be made of bad stuff. The country people come in without shoes. The children are too sick. It is bad for my people those years. But always I have hope. But in the festival of August 1931, more than a year before the Nazi storm, I am thought that hope by itself is not enough. On that day, I see 27 men murdered in a Nazi street fight. I cannot longer just only look on. My time has come to do more. So I say with Martin Luther, I must make my stand. I can do nothing else. God help me. Amen. And Kurt is not very well. There aren't many parts of Europe anymore where he could rest. You've always said you wanted us. Kurt brought us home. If you don't want us, we will understand. Of course we want you, darling. We want you very much. Forever or however long you want. I am old and made of dry cork and bad-mannered. Forgive me. Oh. Be still, Mama. We're all being foolish. And I want to be foolishly happy. <clears throat> oh, family reunion. Sorry to intrude. This is the Count de Brankovis. He and his wife are staying with us for a while. This is my son-in-law, Kurt Muller. How do you do? How do you do? Would it be impertinent for one European to uh, make welcome another? I do not think so. Thank you, sir. Uh, have we met before, Mr. Muller? Uh, did you live in Paris? I, I was in the legation there, and I think No, perhaps... no, we have not met before. <laughs> if it is possible to believe, I am the exile who is not famous. Oh, <laughs> strange. You know, I have a feeling it's most interesting. I... I always have a good ear for the accents of your country, but yours is most difficult to place. Is it um, Asuth German? Now, or? it is difficult to place my accent, Count de Brankovitz, because I speak other languages. Oh, come, come. Lunch will be ready before you children have had a nap. Count, my grandchildren are very charming. You will see them later. Your grandchildren would have to be charming. Of course. I am expecting my wife, Martha, to join me. We'll wait down here until you call for lunch. What are you doing? Oh, Martha, my darling wife. Is that bear luggage you've been examining? What has David told you about Herr Muller? What has David told me? Nothing more than he's told you. What is there to tell? I don't know, but I would like to. What are you doing? Wondering why luggage is unlocked and a shabby briefcase is so carefully locked. You're very curious about Mr. Muller. Hmm. I'm curious about a daughter of the Farrelly's who marries a German who has bullet scars on his face. 
broken bones in his hands. Is he any business of yours? Oh, anything might be my business now. <laughs> we have exactly $18 to our name. Yes. Unfortunately. Anything might be your business now. You sound bitter about me, Martha. You're in love with David. Please, find out from him about Herr Muller. I will certainly do no such thing. Ask your friends at the embassy. They always know their nationals. Yes, but I do not like to ask questions without knowing the value of the answers. Ted, let these people alone. They've certainly had a rough enough time. I won't let you interfere. Yes. Where are you going? I'll see to it that you're alone with David. Tech, where are you going? Uh, seems there's time for a nap before lunch. I'm very tired. And also my room is next to theirs. Tech. Yes, I'm very tired. I shall sleep a while and then I shall dress and go down to the German embassy. No. No, I shall not let you. Oh, don't be stupid. This is the afternoon we play poker there. Have you forgotten? Once again, it's intermission time on Academy Award. Only nature knows how to change scenes without an intermission. Soon you'll gradually become aware of one of those changes... You'll notice a difference in the air. Mornings will be frosty, clear as a drop of spring water. Afternoons in the country will be fragrant with the pleasant, spicy smell of ripening fruit. It's fall and it's refreshing. Pleasing to the senses like the minty tang and brisk, exhilarating action of Squib Dental Cream. For Squib Dental Cream is refreshment in a tube. Cool, creamy, smooth, its brisk action leaves your whole mouth pleasantly wide awake. And the not natural sparkle of your own smile will tell you better than a scientific formula how safe, how soft, how effective is the special polishing agent in this fine dental cream. So, for a mouth refreshed, for a brighter smile, brush your teeth regularly with Squib Dental Cream, a member of the great family of Squib products. Taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. Before continuing with part two of Watch on the Rhine, for making this story available, we want to thank Warner Brothers, who are also producers of Night and Day. Moreover, we want to congratulate Warner Brothers, who yesterday observed an historic anniversary commemorating 20 years of sound pictures. <laughs> And now, The House of Squibb presents part two of Academy Award, starring Paul Lucas in Watch on the Rhine. He plays very well. I like my son-in-law better each hour I know him. So do I, Mama. He's very accomplished. Where? Oh, Court. Sarah, sit down here with me. Have I lost my touch? Never. You play as always with distinction. What is it? What is wrong? The briefcase has been opened. Oh. There's no money missing, but the case has been examined. The gun was put back in a different place. The count. Yes, I'm sure of it. As I was saying. Nellie Sewell told me, Count, that you were playing a large gambling game today at the German embassy with young Phil von Ramey and with Sam Chandler. Nazis and Sam Chandler must make an unpleasant game. I do not gamble to be amused. No? Well, then, we'll certainly stop. I owe you $8.50. The young Baron von Ramey, Herr Muller, was your government military attaché in Spain, huh? My government attaché? He was the German government attaché. He was not attached to the side on which I fought. Oh. I thought you might have known him. We do not know Nazis, Count de Brankovis. I still have a feeling that I've seen you or heard about you, Herr Muller. <laughs> you know, that feeling has been so insistent that I, I, I make guesses, but bad guesses. <laughs> I thought you might be Max Freidank. Freidank is a hero to my people. You do me too much honor. Yes, I found that out. Here in this paper, uh, Zurich, Switzerland... The Zurich papers reprinted today are dispatched from the Berliner Tageblatt on the capture of Colonel Max Freidank. 
Freidank is said to be the chief of the anti-Nazi underground movement. He was a distinguished physicist before the advent of Hitler. And... <gasps> oh, that's bad news for you, Mrs. Muller. I'm most sorry. He was a friend of yours? He was a friend to all decent Germans. A friend to all decent people, Count Abrakovitz. Well, that's what often happens to heroes, unfortunately. Hmm? Yeah, Martha must be ready by now. We'll be back early. I, I don't like long dinner parties. I... Your hands are shaking, Herr Muller. My hands were broken. They are bad when I have fear. Fear for fright, aren't you, me? I am a man who has many kinds of fears. I do not think you would understand that. No. I don't think I've ever been very frightened. That is bad. It is sometimes the road to trouble. I dare say. Good night. What was this all about, Sarah? I don't know all of it yet. I do know that the Count broke open Kurt's briefcase. And he saw what we carry with us, and he knows about Freidank. Which probably means that he's guessing about Kurt. What do you mean, what you carry with you and guessing about Kurt? Kurt works in an illegal organization. He has for seven years. We are carrying with us $23,000. It's been collected here and in Mexico from the pennies and nickels of poor people who don't like fascism. And believe in the work we do. It was to be picked up and taken back by the first man going... Wasn't it careless to have $23,000 lying around to be seen? No, Mommy, it wasn't careless. We've carried money that way for years. There didn't seem any safer place than my house. It was careless of you and David to have a man like that in this house. Yes, it was very careless. But how could we know? The world has changed, Mama, and some of the people in it are dangerous. It is time you knew about that. I have been phoning. It is true about Freidank. But he's not dead. Hans and Ernst were taken with him. Max is not an easy man to kill. But most of his face and one arm... Is... It is not nice when it comes. Well, Sarah? Oh, oh no. It must be, yes. But Max knows you are not well enough. He sent you but here. But now I am more well than he is. When? I think tonight, Sarah, darling. But I do not know. It will depend on the Count de Brankovis. What will depend on him? Did he steal the money? No, of course not. He's not a man who steals. It will come another way. But why are you afraid of him? You're in this country now. There's nothing he can do. <laughs> we will see. We will wait and we will see. <laughs> Well, Herr Blesher, how did you manage in the poker game this afternoon? Count de Broncolis, in this room, in this embassy, I work. That's very commendable. Uh, oh, by the way, your people caught Max Freidank. Are there uh, any others close to Freidank, perhaps, that you may want? We want them all. Here are the lists. Show us where we can put our hands on them in the fatherland. Oh, in any of the countries where we have influence. And you could name your price. We might uh, also manage a visa for you. I am sure you are homesick for shabby palaces and the gaudy cafes and the rest of the decaying things. We, uh, we do not like each other, Herr Blesher. But that will not stand in the way of our doing business. <laughs> Joshua, are you awake? Yes, Father. Shh. Talk softly. Do not awaken the other children. Yes, Father. Father, you must let me go along. I will help in small ways when you go back to Europe. I will learn. You will teach me. I am not a man yet. And it would not be of such importance if anything happened to me. Now, I give you some rules, Joshua. Please remember them and never disobey them. Our forces are small. Therefore, we must risk no more men on any enterprise than are needed to carry it out. Always in our work, a man will wish to go with you. Now, that is wrong. We are not here to show that we are brave. Soon you will be a man. Never have I doubted that for you. Also, this will be what a man should most do. Am I right? Of course, Father. You are young. You are smart. You are strong. You are a fine investment for our work. When the time comes... In the meantime, I give you orders. You think, you train yourself in mind and body. 
Your day is not so distant. If it should come and I have not yet returned, well, it is not wise perhaps to speak so far in the future, but the world goes bad and who knows how long that will last. Therefore, with delicacy and care, I wish you would also prepare Bodo when his time too shall come. God help us. Go to sleep now. Yes, Father. Ah, Herr Muller, you're still up. I've been to the German embassy. It is where I thought you would go. I got from the embassy a list and a description without saying why I wanted them, of course. But if I have to, I will go back to them. Proceed, Count de Brankovic. Well, some of these papers have to do with a man we shall call Gutter, because that is the name he is most frequently used. Age 40 to 45, 170 pounds. Married to a foreign woman, either English or American. Three children. Thought to have left Germany in 1933 and to have joined the notorious Max Freidank. Known by the names of Gutter, Thomas Bodmer, Karl Francis. So I think you are Gutter, Karl Francis. Do not describe me to myself, please. And I think that because Freidank has been taken, you will soon be traveling home. I am going home. I am starting tonight. So? You tell me free of charge, eh? Well, I'll tell you free of charge. I do not believe they've forced any information from Freidank and the others. Thank you. But I am sure they could not. I know all three most well. They will be able to stand up under... under whatever will be given them. Yes, there's a deep sickness in the German character. A love of death, a love of pain. Oh, spare us your moral judgments. Yes, they are sickening coming from you. Get on with your dirty business. Madam Fanny, this is very ugly. I do not do it without some shame. Therefore, I must sink my shame in large money. You have 23000 upstairs, $23,000. Yes, you are an expert with Lux. For $10,000, you can go back to wherever you go. Nobody will know that you go, and I will give you my good wishes. No, that money is going home with me. It was not given to me to save my life, and I shall not so use it. It is to save the lives and further the work of more than I. Then I don't think you will get back. Oh, you're a brave one, Herr Muller, but you will not get back. I will send you a postal card and tell you all about my bravery. Is it true that if the swine talks, you and the others will... will be caught and killed, if they are lucky enough to get killed quickly. Dated, I have 15 or 1,600 in the bedroom safe. That will do very well, madam. And the rest you can give me in a check. All right. We'll get this over without any more fancy talk. I can't take much more of him at any cost. Come on, David. We'll get the money and give it to him with a pair of fire tongs. The new world has left the room. I feel less discomfort with you. We are Europeans, born to trouble and understanding it. You mean my husband and I do not have angry words for you. It goes deeper than that with us. We know how many there are of you. They don't, yet. My mother and brother feel shocked that you were in their house. But we have seen you in so many houses. And your husband, Mrs. Miller? Doesn't he understand me? Yes, I understand you. Do you think I would allow this fantasy with this money? Unlike you, I do not take chances. I'm not a gambler. Get up, please. You... You wouldn't. Put down that gun. Sarah, mark the tour off. I wish nobody to come. Go ahead, Count Brankovic. We shall go outside. Hello. What time is your next plane? To the south, please. To El Paso or Brownsville. Muller. Muller, wait. I know when I'm a loser, I give you my word. You are wait, a... fool. You play with men's lives in order to have money, to live in worthlessness. You and all your shabby kind. When you kill in a war, is not so lonely. Tonight, before you come home, I pray for you. I pray that I will not have to touch you. I do not like to kill this way. But I have done it before and I will do it again. Whenever it must be done. Listen, listen to me. I, I can... have seen many men die. I give you advice. It is easier without words. They will not do you any good now. You will be better without them. Wait, wait. I got the bargain. I've got the... <laughs> I've told them. I've 
made you a reservation on a midnight plane to Brownsville. Liebe Sarah. It is hard for you, eh, madame? Hard? I... I don't know. I... I don't... I... Before I come in, I stand and think. I say I will try to make Fanny and David understand. But in the end, what is there to say? I have stopped a man's life. Shall I not pretend it is not I who axed us? No. I have done it before and I will do it again. And I will always keep my hope that we may make a world in which all men can die in bed. I have a great hate for the violent. They are the sick of the world. Maybe I am sick now, too. You are not sick. Stop it, Kurt. It's late. You must go soon. I'm going to take your car. Now, give me two days. There are two ways to do this. One, I will take the Count with me in my car. Two days after, you may notify the police. And the other way, you can call the police now. I will still leave, but I will not get home. Papa wrote it years ago. Papa said the only men on earth worth their time on earth are the men who will fight for other men. Papa said we have struggled through from darkness. But man moves forward with each day and each hour to a better, freer life. That desire to go forward, that willingness to fight, it cannot be put in a man. But when it is there, Oh, please, let him go back. Of course, darling. He'll go back. We'll take care of things. Good luck for it. Men who wish to live have the best chance to live. I wish to live, Sarah. I wish to live with you. For 17 years, it is as much for me today. I have loved just once and for all of my life. Come back for me, darling, if you can. I will try. Goodbye to you all. In one man's wholehearted devotion to a great cause is often found the inspiration which causes others to continue his work. Today's insistence on perfection at the House of Squibb had its origin in the founder's own crusade against half-hearted service in the cause of human health. One time a new employee pointed out to Dr. Squibb that a slight change in a certain formula would save money and speed production. Young man, Dr. Squibb replied, I am always willing to change a formula when I can improve it. But please remember that the master formula of every worthy business is honor, integrity, and trustworthiness. That is one formula I cannot change. And that is the formula which has won for Squibb the trust of generation after generation of doctors. It is the master formula which also guarantees the uniformity, purity, and efficacy of the everyday health essentials Squibb produces for your home use. The way to get Squibb quality is to ask for it. So when you're buying for your medicine cabinet, always ask for Squibb, a name you can trust. Next week, another great picture. The House of Squibb will present Academy Awards starring Lana Turner in Vivacious Lady. Paul Lucas can soon be seen in the international pictures production, Temptation. This is Hugh Brundage bidding you good night until next Wednesday at the same time when you're invited to listen again to Academy Award presented by the House of Squibb, a name you can trust. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.